When collecting a urine specimen, it is important to follow the proper procedure to ensure that the sample is not contaminated and that the patient is not put at risk for infection. This video will explain the process of collecting a urine sample from an indwelling Foley catheter. In order to collect this sample, the proper supplies will need to be gathered. You will need clean gloves, alcohol prep pads, depending on the method used, either an empty syringe and a collection cup, or a vacutainer adapter, and the three urine sample specimen tubes. The three tubes are the gray top tube, which is used to collect a urine culture specimen, the marble top, which is used for a urinalysis, and the white top, which is used to supply extra urine for any additional testing that may be ordered. Anytime you are collecting a urine sample for either a urinalysis or a urine culture, you should be collecting urine in all three of these tubes and sending them to lab. This is required for a couple of reasons. First, there is a history of samples being collected in the incorrect tube and then being sent to lab. The best case scenario is that this delays treatment slightly if the patient is continuing to create urine regularly and the correct sample can be obtained quickly. But many patients do not create a lot of urine and it could take another day or more before the proper sample can be collected. This is detrimental to the care of this patient. The other reason is that many times orders will be placed for one or the other of these tests, but the remaining test is quickly ordered afterwards. If the lab has the necessary urine in the appropriate tube, they can quickly run the test without the need for anyone to collect another sample. The specimen cup that is used at St. Mary Mercy Hospital is compatible with these vacutainer tubes. It is a small cup with a blue lid. The lid has a straw that protrudes to the bottom of the cup. On the top of the lid is a yellow sticker that conceals the vacutainer port. There is a rubber shaft in the port that protects and conceals a needle. To use this cup with a vacutainer tube, simply insert the top of the tube into the opening and push down until the needle enters the tube. These cups can be found in the pod room. Usually they are packaged in a plastic bag with the gray and marble top tubes, but in times of supply shortage, they will likely be separated, as you see here. The white top tube should be stored in the pod room as well, and will likely be near the specimen cup. Also near the specimen cup, you should find the vacutainer adapter. This adapter has the same screw and port that you use with any standard syringe, but it is attached to a vacutainer port that contains a needle contained in a rubber sheath, just like in the specimen cup. This port functions the same way as the cup, but it is designed to be connected directly to the catheter. It will attach to this port, which is located just below the Y junction on the catheter. Accessing this port will allow you to collect a sample of urine from the tube. Before you collect the urine sample, first clear the tubing of all the urine that may be sitting in it. The urine you collect should be as fresh as possible, so we don't want to use anything that has been sitting in the tubing for an unknown amount of time. Bacteria in urine doubles every 20 minutes, so it's important that the sample is collected as soon as we have enough urine to send to lab. This is also why we can never collect these urine samples from the collection bag itself. If your patient currently has urine flowing in the catheter, lift the tubing above the patient to impede its flow into the bag. When you have enough urine, you can remove it from the port. But this is likely not going to be the case with most of your patients. You will need to wait for them to create enough urine to collect, and you will not have the time to stand at the bedside with the tubing lifted for that amount of time. So you will need to manipulate the tubing to stop it flowing into the bag. To do this, you can purposefully create a dependent loop in the tubing. Use the green sheet clip to hold the tubing in a looped shape. Now as the patient urinates, it will be trapped in this loop for you to collect for your specimen. It is very important that you check on the patient frequently at this point, at least every five minutes. As already stated, we need the sample to be collected as soon as possible once enough urine has been created. But it is also important that you check on the patient to maintain the patient's safety. By creating the dependent loop, we have introduced a potential risk to this patient for the development of a catheter-associated urinary tract infection, or CAUTI. If urine is left sitting in that loop for extended periods of time, the bacterial growth can lead to infection. If the urine backs up to the patient because it cannot move down to the bag, it can cause retention issues. So make sure you or someone else is monitoring the patient at least every five minutes to eliminate these risks. As soon as enough urine has been created, collect the sample and remove the dependent loop from the catheter tubing. When you do have enough urine in the tubing, it is time to collect your sample. The preferred method of sample collection is to use the vacutainer adapter. By collecting with these supplies, you eliminate many opportunities for contamination. The urine is going directly from the catheter into the lab tube, where the other method we will discuss requires moving the urine to multiple containers. Begin by cleaning the port with an alcohol pad or chlorohexidine swab for 30 seconds. Then, open the vacutainer adapter and attach it to the tubing. Now you will need to move the urine from the dependent loop until it rests beneath the collection port, so lift the tubing above the patient to accomplish this. 
with the urine resting below the port, continue to hold the tubing up so that the urine does not accidentally drain down to the bag. Now insert the collection tubes into the vacutainer port. The tubes are negatively pressured, so as soon as they are accessed with the needle, they will pull whatever is on the other side of that needle into the tube in order to equalize the pressure. If you have urine collected below the port, the tube will pull that urine into itself, and all you need to do is hold the tube in place until it is full. Look at the tube and locate the min fill line. You have to have at least this much urine in the tube in order to ensure a good lab test can be completed. You will always insert them in the same, specific order. Gray top for the culture, then marble for the urinalysis, then white for the extra urine. There are preservatives in the gray and marble top tubes, and if they are transferred to the other tubes out of order, it can cause contamination of the sample and ruin it. So always collect them in the same order. Gray, marble, white. With the samples collected, detach the adapter from the catheter and dispose of it in the sharps container. Because there is a needle in it, do not throw it in the trash. Label your tubes appropriately, task it off in Epic, and send the tubes down to lab in a biohazard Ziploc bag. The other method we will discuss is to draw the urine from the catheter into a syringe. Clean the port for 30 seconds with alcohol or chlorhexidine and attach the syringe. Position the urine under the port and draw up the sample. Now you will need to move the sample into the specimen cup. You will need more than 10 cc of urine, so you will either need to clean the port again and draw up another 10 cc, or use a 30 cc syringe if available. Empty the syringe into the sample cup, being careful not to touch the inside of the cup with the syringe. When the urine is in the cup, screw on the lid. You will notice the straw should be below the urine level in the cup. Now peel back the yellow sticker to reveal the port and collect your samples in the same order as previously described. Gray, marble, white. Label the samples, task it off an Epic, and send them to lab in a biohazard bag. Remove the lid from the sample container. Dispose of any additional urine in the toilet. The blue lid should go into the sharps container because it contains a needle, and the cup itself should be disposed of in a trash can. This is not the preferred method of sample collection because of the increased risk of contamination. Every time you transfer the sample, there is a new risk, first in the syringe, then to the cup, and then finally to the lab tube, where the direct method of using the vacutainer adapter eliminates two of those containers and their associated risks. After collecting the urine sample, make sure all the urine drains into the collection bag. Then use the green sheet clip to position the tubing so that there are no dependent loops. You have successfully collected a urine sample from a Foley. It is important that the proper precautions are taken when collecting a urine sample from an indwelling catheter. There are always risks for infection when a catheter is in place, as well as risks for contaminating a specimen if the proper steps are not taken. This can lead to life-threatening infections in the patient or, in the case of contaminated specimens, unnecessary treatments to the patient, among other issues. So be diligent and always follow the proper procedure when collecting a urine specimen.